Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Gem Wednesday prayer meeting. As we begin, uh, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. And thank you for this day, Lord. At this time, we want to praise your name. And we want to know you more through your words, Lord. And we want to pray out to you for the world and for ourselves and for our community and for our family, Lord. And also we, we, pr we praise that you are the strength of our hearts and you are the portion of our lives, Lord. At this time, give us your wisdom and strength and power so that we can, we can live according to your words, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of my heart.
let's pray together for today's worship service, for today's prayer meeting. Lord, thank you that you are a good, good Father. Lord, today's, through today's prayer meeting, Lord, help us to know how great you are and how good you are, Lord. And help us to realize who we are. And help us to be grateful that we are loved by you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for calling us here, and thank you for all, for all the technology we have so that we can pray together through YouTube, Lord. At this time, teach us what to pray for, and teach us how to pray. And at this time, we open your words, the scripture. Teach us your will and teach us what you want us to do, Lord. And renew our hearts and renew our thoughts and our attitudes, Lord. Thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's passage. Is the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. The book of Luke, 16, 19 to 31. Let me read it. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who, was, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order, that, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five, I have five brothers, so that he may warn them lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the word of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today, and thank you for allowing us to, to take your words, Lord. This time, Lord, give us your wisdom and strength to understand your will toward us, Lord. 
Thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing great at home. Um, I have a question uh, this evening before we dive into the passage. Uh, how do you manage your schedules? Personally, I use an iPhone, so I organize my schedule using an Apple calendar. It is very efficient for, for managing my schedule. Sometimes I change the colors, colors for more important schedules so that I can see more clearly. But the thing is, sometimes I forget, forget to write down the schedule after I make an appointment with someone. Of course, it is okay if I remember, but when I forget it, it becomes a huge problem. Have you also experienced this before? But today, I want to share one schedule that we often forget without writing it down on our calendar. It's a schedule that everyone has. What is it? Death. D-E-A-T-H. Death. Death is a schedule or event for everyone. But no one writes, writes it down on their calendar since we don't know when it will happen. And we often forget that Death is coming to us. Today's parable also talks about this topic. And I want all of us to understand the death and remember it is coming to us through today's passage. Today's passage has a connection with last week's parable that Peace Stanley preached, the parable of the dishonest manager. After Jesus told the parable, Pharisees who loved money and heard the parable ridiculed Jesus in verse 14. And in verse 15, Jesus said, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart, for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Jesus, Jesus confronted the Pharisees who justified themselves before men. Then Jesus shares today's parable again. Therefore, today's parable, today's passage should be interpreted in the context that Jesus confr confronted and warned Pharisees. Now let's see the let's see today's passage. Um, Jesus begins the parable of the rich and red Lazarus in verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine robes. He was a man of luxury. In him there was nothing lacking, nothing lacking in this world. He had everything he wanted. And there was another character whose name is Lazarus. He was a very, very poor man covered with sores. Verse 21 explains how poor he was. It says, he desired to be fed with what fell from, fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. Lazarus had nothing to eat when the rich had everything he wanted. But after this, both of them died. Although the passage does not mention the reason. It says, Lazarus the poor man was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. However, the Bible says the rich man died and was buried. We see the different records of the two characters, right? It shows there was a difference between their death. Also verse Verse 23, verse 23 explains the rich man went to Hades and Lazarus was with Abraham. Verse 24, the rich man was very thirsty with a great, with a great torment and asked Abraham to send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool his tongue. Perhaps Jesus intended this in this parable. The riches and poverty in the world are completely opposed after death. And Abraham's answer was very resolute. Child, remember that 
you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. Also Abraham said, and besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. One of the interesting things in the, in the parable is that it explains the details of heaven and hell. In the Bible, there are not many details about them. Of course, this is a parable, so we should, we should not interpret everything uh, literally, uh, but we can assume that we, we can assume the image of heaven and hell. So Abraham's words make it, make it clear that heaven and hell, there are boundaries. There, they are two different places, and they have absolute, absolute boundaries that cannot, cannot be mixed or mingled. Now the rich man realized that drinking water is impossible and asked Abraham to send Lazarus to his family so that his family member, his brothers, will not come to hell. He didn't want his family to experience the torment he had. But Abraham again gives a firm answer. They have Moses and prophets. Let them hear them. However, the rich asked again Abraham to send Lazarus so that his family might know for sure there is heaven and hell and repent. Sadly, Abraham answer, answered, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. And the parable ends. Now we have a question. Who is the rich and Lazarus in the parable? It is very obvious that the rich man is Pharisees. As I said before, Jesus gives this parable to the Pharisees who focused on, them, focused on their appearance and justified themselves before men. It is a parable that warns Pharisees and us since we focus too much on earthly things. So I want to share the three simple lessons from today's parable. Number one, everyone dies, but there are two different deaths. One is death that leads us into heaven in Jesus Christ, and the other is death that leads us into hell without faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone in the world can deny that every human being dies although no one knows the time. But the interesting thing is that most people live without thinking too much about it. We care today, we care about today, we care about tomorrow's schedule, we plan for our lives after retirement, but we do not care about our death. I believe Christians should think differently since we know we have eternal life in Jesus. As long as we know for sure we have eternal life, we won't struggle to fill our needs, fill our needs in this world. Instead of focusing on this very short world, we will focus on God's kingdom that lasts forever. As the book of Matthew chapter 6, 31, 33 says, we will seek the kingdom of God first rather than seeking the kingdom of the world. So we should live by remembering and recognizing death and eternal life every day. Secondly, the parable gives us the lesson that the late regret doesn't change anything. The rich, the rich went to hell and realized his faults and failure, but it was too late. Late regrets do not change anything. Now is the time for us to change. Now is the time for us to take a step. If there's anyone watching this video who doesn't know what gospel is, or anyone who is not sure whether you go heaven or hell after you die, 
I want you to contact pastors and leaders nearby. I pray that all of us believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected to solve the problem of our sins. What if we already believe it? Can we live as we want with full of sins? No. Just because you believe, that doesn't mean everything is over. It's just the beginning of your journey of faith. In that belief, we must build up and achieve godliness. We should fight against sin. Close, we should close our eyes to the things of the world, and we should open our eyes to the things of God. James 1.27 says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is to visit orphan, orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. We should take care of people around us for the glory of God. We must, we must pray and love the word of God. These are, these are our ultimate goal as Christians. If you feel any lack of these things, today is the time to take a step. We can't change everything at once, so let us choose at least one thing at a time. Let us fight against our sins and our sin nature for the glory of God. Finally, today's passage, today's parable teaches us that now is the time to share the gospel. The rich man regretted in hell and wanted his family to know the truth. However, it was too late. This shows the urgency of sharing the gospel. Urgency of sharing the gospel. If we truly believe Jesus is the one way to go to heaven, we can't stop sharing the gospel to our family members, co-workers, and our friends. Perhaps this is the most difficult lesson and homework that today's parable gives us. It is always not easy. Sometimes it feels like a burden sharing the gospel. However, it is an unavoidable task, unavoidable burden we have. If we truly believe the existence of hell and heaven, let us continue to share the gospel with the heart of compassion. Let us continue to pray for those who do not believe. Let us continue to be a good example that resembles Jesus Christ and show the joy of salvation to them. Let us continue to give them water and sunlight. Then God will surely let, them, let their faith grow. Don't give up. He will show us the fruits. Let us keep planting the seed of the gospel. So we saw the three lessons of the parable. First, everyone dies, but there are two different deaths. Second, the late regret doesn't change anything. Now is the time to take a step for the glory of God. Third, now is the time to share the gospel. Don't give up. Keep sharing the gospel through your prayer, life, and words. Sometimes we think that we have tomorrow and the future to build up God's kingdom. However, let us not forget that God also provided us today for His glory. Let us stop putting off until tomorrow what we can do today. Tonight is the time. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your words tonight, Lord. And thank you for teaching us about that and teaching us how to live according to it. Lord, allow us to change our lives. And give us your strength and wisdom so that we achieve, we are able to achieve the godliness you want more and more in our lives. 
And Lord, help us to be the light and the salt in our family, in our workplace, and in all circumstances, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. salvation for the local workers and their families and pray for peaceful reunification between south and north and freedom of religion pray for God's special grace and his provision during this pandemic pandemic crisis in NK also let us pray for Josh Blanchard Josh has a number of video projects that require travel around Cambodia. Pray for the safety on the roads 
and pray for protection from COVID and provision for Jacqueline and the boys. And secondly, pray for his family as they look to choose a school for Elijah to go to in August. Pray also that school will be open by then. Let us pray for our NK missionary and Josh Blanchard. Let's pray. Hero. 
Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. background music and I want you to have a time of prayer with three prayer topics number one pray for the world affected by COVID-19 and pray for injustice in this world number two pray for spiritual awakening of the churches in the world pray for pastors pray for leaders and pray for all the Christians in the world and for their spiritual awakening And number three, pray for our community, JEM. Pray for all the five congregations to be healthy, a healthy community of God. After praying these three, three topics, uh, let us have a time of individual prayer. Uh, take a moment what you've learned, what you've heard today, and meditate on it, and pray about it. Especially pray for non-believers around you there are many things they need but most of all they need jesus christ let's pray for them and let's pray for these three prayer topics let's pray